Welcome to Sold Out RFK, where today it will be the battle of the unbeatens as the Washington Redskins play host to the surprising Phoenix Cardinals. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm James Brown. Well, the Cardinals' history here in Washington has not been a good one. As a matter of fact, the Cardinals haven't won an RFK since 1978, and Joe Gibbs, the head coach of the Redskins, personally has mastered the Cardinals with a record of 17-3. My partner today is Randy Cross, and Randy, those facts seem to suggest that despite the surprising start of the Cardinals, their bubble will be burst today. Well, you know, if the Washington Redskins have prepared for the old Phoenix Cardinals, they're in for a world of surprise. And head coach Joe Gibbs is concerned about his team's emotional state. Can they come back from the big Monday night game? I look for the Skins to be upset today. No kidding. Well, now, from your perspective, why are these the new Cardinals? The main reason is defense, and no other reason is bigger than new defensive coordinator Fritz Schirmer. His relentless defense has produced 13 turnovers. For the Cardinals to, be, to upset today, they're going to have to do two things. They're going to have to get the ball on the ground going. The ground control has to eat up time on the clock, and they have to control their emotions. They have to be able to get something good going early, and that'll put them on a roll. Washington has won the coin toss, so Phoenix will be kicking off. Greg Davis, the kicker for the Cardinals. And back deep for the Washington Redskins. Ryan Mitchell, the quick and shifty one indeed. And we're underway at RFK. From the eight. And dropped at about the 20. Ricky Irvins. So Washington will take over first and 10. First possession, Mark Rippon. Fifth year quarterback out of Washington State at the helm. And a big line injury has caused some movement around there. Ed Simmons out at right tackle now, so Joe Jacoby and Raleigh McKenzie at left guard in place of Jacoby. Back to the receivers, Ernest Biner, the lone setback in the posse, Monk, Clark, and Sanders. First and 10 for the Skins. Ball at the 21. On the ground, Biner. And Biner. No gain on the play. Strong defensive front for the Cardinals. The early season star of this Cardinals defense is linebacker Ken Harvey. He's been getting the sacks, and he's been making the big plays. Up front, keep an eye on nose tackle Jim Waller. Good pass rusher for a nose tackle. Linebackers, Freddie Joe Nunn's on the other side from Harvey, and Eric Hill is a big playmaker. Robert Massey, new face at the cornerback with an ex-New ex Orleans Saint. Second and ten. Sanders in motion. Ripping, quick out to Gary Clark, and Clark maybe a yard or two on the play. Stopped quickly by Robert Massey. Joe Gibbs in his 11th season here at Washington, longest tenure of any Redskins coach. Coming off of Monday Night Affairs, a record of 15 and two, so he certainly knows how to make good use of a short work week. And here on third down, the Redskins have a main man, and that's Art Monk. Third and seven. Six defensive backs for the Cardinals. Rip with time and throws it complete. And it's enough for the first down. Out of the backfield, Viner. Nine yards picked up on a play, and Randy Washington feels as if they found the replacement finally for John Riggins, but someone who can do a bit more in pass catch. Exactly. That is the one thing that Ernest Biner has been able to add to this offense different. He's a great runner, but also out of the backfield, he's a threat, especially over the middle. First and 10 from the 33. Monk and Clark to the top of your screen. This is Biner. And Biner with a nice hole up the middle. Six-yard run by Biner, stopped by Eric Hill. Nice play by the Redskins offense there. Didn't look real fancy. You'll see coming in a little motion coming this way. It gets a nice kick out blocked. And that just opens a huge hole for Biner. Watch the inside. Double team on Waller. Big Joe Jacoby gets a nice block on Faulkner 94. So very fine job by the Redskins offensive line. Clark and Sanders to the near side on second and four. Biner. Picking his hole for the first down. 
up to midfield. Tim McDonald leading a horde of Cardinals, but Viner pushing his way for an 11 yard gain. Let's look at it from the backside. Watch the push. Just watch this whole line move this way. Just great surge by the offensive line of the Washington Redskins, and Viner could just about go anywhere. Look at all the holes. He chooses to go right behind Attics. Nice block there. I'm sorry, that was Shalreth coming around. Just pancake the linebacker Hill. Viner called the collision player by Gibbs. First and ten, ball at midfield, just underway. Three tight ends in for the Skins. Viner. And Viner. A nine-yard run by Ernest Viner. Stopped by Freddie Joe Nunn. And this is the one thing that I think Joe Bugle wanted to bring into his defense was being able to stop the run. He's got big guys up now, up front now with Faulkner and Patterson. I mean, they're all 300-pound-plus guys. They've emphasized stopping the run, but right now the offensive line for Washington is just gashing the front of this Phoenix defense. Joe Bugle has seen Ernest Biner carry four times for 26 yards. And this is Biner again, and he has the first down. So very basic football on the part of Joe Gibbs opening up, hand off to Biner, let him power his way forward. And if you remember the Washington Redskins from the early 80s, they were a team of methodical pounding with John Riggins. It was patient football. Pound it, pound it, pound it, go deep. Since then, they've been really a finesse team throwing a lot of passes and mixing in the run. We're going back to the early 80s style right now, early in the first quarter. And back with the three tight end formation. Play action, Rippin looking for Sanders. Incomplete. Sanders covered that time by Robert Massey, the third-year player out of North Carolina Central. And again, as you mentioned, Randy, Robert Massey in in place of the injured rookie Aeneas Williams and Massey. Just a matter of time before he starts for the Cardinals. That's right. At either corner, he is a great addition for the Cardinals. Good, savvy veteran, the great man-to-man -man coverage guy. He's shown already two plays early in this game that he can stay with these Redskin receivers. 10-09 remaining in the first period of play. James Brown along with Randy Cross. No score. Opening drive for the Skins. Ball at the 38 of Phoenix. Second and 10. Complete to Gary Clark inside the 10. Alert play by Middleton picking the ball up, but the play was whistled dead. Gary Clark with the first down at the eight-yard line of Phoenix, a 30-yard pass play. And this is a good example of the patience that Mark Rippon has developed. He doesn't mind sitting back there. He likes to go for the big plays, and he's looking Clark the whole way. He expects Clark to come open, and he sure does. Lynch trying to strip the ball out. Ball doesn't come out until the ground causes the fumble. First and goal, ball at the eight. Minor. Down to the three. Lorenzo Lynch with help from Tim McDonald. And Washington, impressive indeed in the early going this season in the red zone. This whole offense has got it going, but look at this. Eight of the nine times they've scored, the other time they're just running out the clock. They didn't really care. But this team has got a great combination. They've got good passing, and right now today they've got fantastic running going. 8.46 remaining in the first period of play. Ball at the two. From the second and goal. Nothing cute. Biner. It's a signal. Touchdown. Washington Redskins. line judge was a little hesitant with the official touchdown signal, but indeed, Biner knew it. A little NFC East smash mouth football. The heck with the pass. They got us down here. But once you get in this territory, you put your big guys on their little guys and you pound them. Biner coming off of a 101-yard performance against Dallas. And this is the man with the golden foot, Chip Lowmiller. 
And the point after is good, so Washington scores on its opening drive and lead it by a touchdown. Miller Lite would like to translate the sounds guys make when watching baseball. The great Pilsner taste keeps you ahead of it all. Can't beat that. Miller Lite. It's it. And that's that. The Allstate agent who helps insure your car can give you a hand with a plan for life insurance. Life insurance. Your Allstate agent wants to be your agent for life. You're in good hands with Allstate. If your sporty car doesn't feel so sporty anymore, you need a change. To BF Goodrich TA tires, put on a set and feel a whole new level of performance. On June 23rd, BMW introduced the completely redesigned 325i sports sedan. The press has reacted. Have you? A two-yard run by Ernest Biner accounts for the Washington scoring. 11 plays, 79 yards, 623 off of the clock. That was the opening drive for the Skins. Very impressive drive. And one thing happened just now that Joe Bugle didn't want to happen very much, and especially not early, that Redskin band started playing that darn hail to the Redskins. <laughs> you take a look at Randall Thrill Hill, number 81, and John Jackson, number 80, back deep for the Cardinals. And Low Miller gets a foot in it. And Thrill Hill has to take it three yards deep. Decides not to bring it out, so Phoenix will open up from its own 20. And there's a late flag on the field. Only thing you could think of there would be a possible late push in the back by one of the Phoenix defenders. Our referee today is Tom White. We'll get the call. There is no penalty on the play. The foul occurred after the touchback in the end zone. The flag will be picked up. First so down on the 20-yard line. All right, so Tom Tupa, fourth-year quarterback out of Ohio State, will be at the helm. And a big front line anchored by Luis Sharp and Tootie Robbins, 300 pounds plus on that offensive wall. Anthony Thompson, Johnny Johnson in the backs. Ernie Jones and Ricky Pro, two very good wide receivers. Cooper to pass on first down, and it's complete to Thompson. And Thompson lunges ahead for a seven-yard gain. And there's the NFL's fastest man, Darrell Green. Seems like he's been with the Redskins for 15 years, nine-year veteran, one of the best. And up front, new guys in the middle of tackles. Eric Williams and Tim Johnson now going into the season as starters. Matt Millen, been a great addition as plan B from the 49ers. And there's that secondary. Danny Copeland is in there for Flag on a play as Johnny Johnson runs ahead, but there is a flag on a play. Tom Tupa pulling him off early with his new inflection in that voice in the snap count. All sides, defense. Number 78, the penalty is declined. We'll take the result of the play. First down. Timmy Johnson, Randy, you talked about the new inflection of quarterback Tom Tupa. A real change for Tupa. Tupa used to have kind of a squeaky voice. He's learned to really change the inflection. On the ground, Thompson. And Thompson moves ahead for about four. Will bring up a second and six stop by Andre Collins. Tupa going with the no huddle here. They'd like to catch Washington off guard and not allow them to do their substitutions. Oh, 
Three wide outs in for the Cardinals. Tupa with time. Complete to pro for the first down in Redskins territory. So Tupa with an impressive looking drive going for him. 20 yard pass play. Matt Millen on the stop. And a new twist for the Phoenix Cardinals. They haven't shown this in the first two games using this hurry up offense. Three wide outs again on first down. On the ground, this is Johnny Johnson. And Johnson picks up a couple. And Washington quickly making some defensive changes here. Boy, Joe Bugle really is showing an awful lot of confidence in his young quarterback, Tom Tupa. Well, this is an offense Tupa can have a lot of confidence in. I don't think it's real complicated in the passing game. They have to emphasize the power up front. Second and eight. Tupa, low throws it incomplete. Flag on a play in the backfield. And it'll be holding against the Cardinals. We talked earlier in the game about the emotions. Holding, 63 offense, 10 yards, still second down. We talked earlier in the game about the emotions of the Phoenix Cardinals. Right now, they seem to be getting the better of them. They seem a little overexcited, a little over anxious. They're, they're making some mistakes earlier. They have to settle down. Look at that big offensive line there. Tootie Robbins, 315 plus maybe. <laughs> Second and 18. A two-back set. Johnny Johnson and Anthony Thompson in. Skin showing blitz. Johnson. Wrapped up by Monty Coleman. And a good defensive play by Coleman Johnson, only gaining three of those yards back. Monty Coleman, Joe Gibbs didn't have enough to say positive about him, but Randy, he has been plagued with hamstring problems throughout his career. And hamstrings are things that stay with you for a long time. We talked to J Gary Clark about the same thing. He said he pulled his hamstrings initially down at Jacksonville in the USFL, and his are still bothering him. Monty has got to get injury free to be effective. Third and 15. The Cardinals were 0 for 10 last week against the Eagles. Complete to Jones, and Jones is going to be about four to five yards shy of the first down marker. So third down, bugs them again. 11 yards regained on that play. And Randy, it looks like they're going to even attempt a field goal from this distance. And I talked to Greg Davis before the game, and he said, hey, I'm comfortable here anywhere inside of 60 yards. Inside the 60? Inside of 60. <laughs> we saw him last week against Philadelphia kick a 52-yarder. His longest is 53, 54, so I mean, he's got the leg to do this. Well, this will be a 54 yarder. Boy, that's confidence. Inside of 60 yards, he feels comfortable. Very humid day, though. The air is dead. It may not carry well. It's up. And it's no good. So Greg Davis moves to one of three. From 50 yards plus, still trail by seven. How much insulation do you have in your attic? Three inches? Six inches? Well, the Department of Energy recommends R38 for most American homes, which is equivalent to a foot of Owens Corning pink fiberglass. So grab a ruler and measure your attic insulation. Then get rolling and get a foothold on your energy bills. For more information, call 1-800-GET-PINK. You know, ever since the new BP stations have come on the scene, big things have been happening. Millions of customers have been pulling in. You see, more and more drivers are discovering that high-octane BP Super Gasoline cleans their entire fuel intake system. So while our new stations have brought everyone in, it's BP Performance that brings everyone back. Sure is nice to be so popular.
BP on the move. Whoa, 50 Studebaker. Yeah. Hey, we had one of these when I was a kid. Weird. Yeah. The other kids called it a stupid baker because <laughs> it looked the same from the front as it did from the back. And yeah, that's a classic. Right. Hey, I should buy it and put a sign on it that says, Now Who's Stupid? I don't know. Could you put the sign on the front or the back? Oh, cute. Relax. You're among friends. Levi's 100% cotton dockers. Cardinals defensive coordinator Fritz Shermer and the goal of his defense right now, they've got to stop this Redskins running game down. The Redskins ran right through him in the first drive. Shermer's defense needs to control this game. If not, the Skins have the ability to make this very unpleasant for the Phoenix Cardinals. There's the offensive line. A big one indeed. Oh, they're big and they seem a little confused as well as being big. Redskins start with good field position as a result of that field goal missed ball at the 36 first and 10. Biner. And why not continue to give it to him looking impressive as Biner gets it across the 40. Four yard gain will bring up a second and six stop by Eric Hill the third year inside linebacker from LSU. Going right up there behind big Jim Lachey, the left tackle, and Raleigh McKenzie in at left guard. Joe Jacoby's moved over to right guard, right tackle. Raleigh McKenzie's at left guard, and he's the best pass blocker the Skins have. Second and six. Marcus Turner in the defensive backfield in place of Michael Zordich for the Cardinals. Biner on the ground again, and Biner banging the head for about two. And once again, Eric Hill on the stop. 338 on the clock in the first quarter. Skins leading it seven to nothing. And Biner, the workhorse here in the early going. 43 yards already on the ground in the first quarter. And they've run the same play three or four times with Middleton in the H back position coming in and trapping out on the outside linebacker. Concentrate on that play, Cardinals. You better stop it or Joe Gibbs will give it to you every time. On third down. Rip to pass. With time. Complete for the first down. And Biner continuing to show his versatility, stopped by Lorenzo Lynch. So if he isn't running it out of the backfield, he's catching it. We talk about how good Ernest Biner's been running, but let's take a look at him right here coming out of the backfield, gets out in the flat, and gets this reception. The extra addition to him into the backfield, being able to run well, and being a legitimate receiver is a great plus for the Redskins. That's Fritz Shermer's defense is keeping everything in front of him. Unfortunately, they're giving up that yards easily. On first and 10 from the 49, Biner again. Biner with a big hole. A nine yard run to the right by Ernest Biner. Will bring up a second and one. Finally stopped by Eric Hill. You know, Biner wants the workload that's being put on him, Randy. Joe Gibbs would like to give him a bit of a break. He'd like to. I tell you, you're going to have a hard time taking the ball out of this guy's hands the way he's running. Look at the acceleration. 215 pounds on a 5'10 frame. Then he just lowers his head for the last three or four yards. This team is extremely fired up right now. Well, he gets a bit of a breather right now as Gerald Riggs is in. The lone setback. Second and one. Riggs the ball carrier, and Riggs has the first down. What a luxury to be able to put Gerald Riggs in and give Ernest Biner a bit of a breather. And he needs it. Biner's getting a little water, getting a little ice towel. It's very humid here in Washington. It's only about 80 degrees, but it's 90% humidity right now. That'll be a factor late in the game. Washington with over 100 yards of offense in the first quarter already. 115 left to play in the first. Ball at the 38 of Phoenix, 1-10, left in the first quarter. Riggs stopped in the backfield this time. Freddie Joe Nunn, a loss of two on the play. And Freddie Joe Nunn showing the kind of quickness and explosiveness the Cardinals coach Joe Bugle thought he would back in his old linebacking position. And he's happy to get that hand off the ground. We talked to him yesterday, and he got that big smile on his face. He says, yeah, 
You know, now I'm, I stand up and I can rush and I can do everything. My hand doesn't get dirty unless I'm making a tackle. <laughs> James, the ball's on the 40-yard line. The scary thing about Chip Lowmiller, the kicker for the Skins, they're already in field goal range with Lowmiller. 57 yards, Lowmiller can boot it. He can do that easy. He has the golden foot so far. Second and 12. Sanders in motion. Complete to Biner. Biner, first down and more. Inside the 10. Watch the right guard, the right tackle, Jacoby in the back. Little screen pass. Watch how beautifully this sets up. There's Schlereth going out. There's Biner. There's Jacoby. Now watch the blocks Jacoby and Biner put on. Whoa. Good job. Now it's just Biner. Determination. Oof. Nice run. Only fitting that the end of the first quarter should end on a Biner play. Skins lead it by seven. sheltered in the harbor and some would rather sail into life with the unmistakable scent of Old Spice. Clean, true and classic. Old Spice, one of the legends of the sea. <laughs> Listen to my nephew. He's going to be a lawyer like me. He's even going to look like me. Oh, really? So does that mean on his first big trial day, the jury's going to notice his winning smile? Yeah. And his great suit? Yeah. Oh, his little flakes. No, dandruff for me? Oh, it can happen to perfect people. Here, just use my shampoo. Head and shoulders? Mm -hmm. But you don't have dandruff. I rest my case. Head and shoulders, because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. The driver of this car adds something special to his motor oil. So does the driver of this car. They both use STP oil treatment. For drivers on a racetrack or drivers on a fast track, STP. Motorcraft Energy Conserving Oil can help reduce fuel consumption. It can also reduce traffic. Motorcraft Quality Parts. Peace of mind from Ford. The people of CBS News, Dan Rather, Connie Chung, Mike Wallace, Ed Bradley, Leslie Stoll, and Charles Gerald experience CBS News. Start of the second quarter of play, and it's Ernest Biner 7, Phoenix nothing. 141 total yards. Ernest Biner has 98 of them. First and goal, ball at the 9. This is Riggs, the ball carrier and rope and haul tied by Ken Harvey. And that's your guy, Randy, a loss of one on the play. Harvey's got great lateral movement. Not only is he extremely strong, he can go sideways well. You know, big, look at that big old fan there on the sideline. That's good. That's to get some air moving. If, if it wasn't for those fans, those players' hair wouldn't be moving at all. That air <laughs> is dead down on their field, down on that field. But in here, you know, Finer's coming back in the game. If I'm Joe Gibbs, Phoenix hasn't proven to me yet that they can stop the run, especially the run inside. Going to the corners maybe not, isn't the best idea right now. Inside between the tackles, you got to keep pounding at it. The important number you saw in that graphic on the screen, 90% humidity. Second and goal, ball at the 10. And the end around, and the reverse, there's Ricky Sanders. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. Low Miller with the point after, and it's good. 
So Washington has put Phoenix in a 14 zip hole, 1403 left in the first half. A big hole. And here's Sanders. He'll come this way. Watch all the action start in this direction. The Cardinals go in that direction. And then keep an eye on Mark Griffin, the quarterback. You're going to see him do something a little unusual. Watch the action. Here comes Sanders. Now look at his lead guard, number 11, going out in front of him. Look at this. You tell me this guy won't give it up for his team. His offensive lineman will take him out for a hamburger, a nice big Coke. They like that kind of stuff out of their starting quarterback here in Washington. On June 23rd, BMW introduced the completely redesigned 325i sports sedan. press has reacted. Have you? Where do you want to be in five years? I had an old Studebaker truck and $300 when I started this company. In a few years, my sons will be ready to take over, and then I'd like to... Uh, I never told anybody this. Uh, I want to live in Paris and go to cooking school. Hey, that's what I want to do. Will I have the money to do it? You can get there from here. With Shearson Lehman Brothers. How do you get comfortable? Who, me? I wear Comfort Tech shoes by Florishine. Let me show you why. You see, they got this special cushion insert and sole with a bunch of tiny air bubbles. Now watch how they absorb the impact of every step you take. And there are Comfort Techs from dress to casual. I'll tell you, they're the most comfortable shoes I've ever worn. Try a pair for 30 days. If you don't agree, you'll get your money back. Get Comfort Tech by Florishine. And get comfortable. You're watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. Randall Thrill Hill with the ball from the goal line. Up across the 15, maybe to the 16. So Phoenix will start from its own 16-yard line. Take a look at Joe in Toronto, they're talking pennant. The first place Blue Jays battle the power of Jose Canseco and the Oakland A's next Saturday. Inside your smooth running engine is a torture chamber. And under these grueling conditions, only one leading motor oil meets the world's toughest requirements for viscosity breakdown, Castrol. The only leading motor oil that provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol. After all, why make things tougher on your engine? Castrol GTX. Engineered for today's smaller cars. It's stuck. You see? Yeah. Every channel. Light beer. Light beer. Um. Uh, well, we're going to have to drain it. Grab anything that'll hold beer. Oh, and uh, <coughs> call some friends over. Will you look at that? Yeah, I'm looking. Miller Lite made beer better. The great Pilsner taste keeps you ahead of it all. Everybody likes that. You don't say beer now, you say light. The beer that beers become. Miller Lite. It's it. And that's that. Tom Tupu and the Phoenix Cardinals. Their goal right now is to get this running game and this offense going. Their defense has been on the field for 11 minutes and 45 seconds so far in this ball game in two possessions. The Washington Redskins have put that much time off the clock. Phoenix has had the ball only for just a little bit over four minutes. Time of possession, a critical stat indeed. As a matter of fact, of the 28 games won in the first two weeks, 24 have won the time of possession battle. Exactly. And look at that offensive difference, 142 to 54. In parentheses, you ought to put Biner. And I, and I don't think Joe Bugle changes his state of mind here or his attack going against the Skins. He's got to be patient and hope his defense can stop this Redskin attack. 13-55 left in a second quarter play. Phoenix first and 10 from its own 16. Play action. Tupa going for Jones, incomplete. Ernie Jones covered step for step by Daryl Green. It was interesting to hear the Phoenix wide receivers talk about the respect they have for Daryl Green. 
You know, people refer to Daryl Green's style as being kind of soft. He's not an aggressive, grabby, and get in your face guy. But when you watch the tapes, you watch this guy in action, he's never very far from the receiver. And he has got unbelievable catch up speed. It's not like he never gets fooled and he never gets beaten, but he never gets beaten for very long. Nine years in the league and still the fastest. Second and ten. Three wideouts in for the cards. Flags on a play. Tupa running through with the free play. And Johnny Johnson grabbed in the backfield. So the Skins will certainly have this one against them. Tim Johnson's down there pounding on the ground like it might have been him that jumped off sides. That's tough to do. You're looking straight ahead. You're looking at the ball. You're hearing the crowd. And that quarterback yells real hard. Hut! Here comes the call. And they jump. Offsides, 78 defense, five yards, still second down. So Tim Johnson had reason to pound the ground. <laughs> That's a tough, tough distinction to make, though, between the, the hut that they mean and the hut that they don't mean, and the ball doesn't move, and you go. Second and five. Three wide outs again. Tupa, sack. Andre Collins. First sack of the season for Andre Collins, the second-year player out of Penn State. And a loss of eight on the play. You wonder, how does a guy get there that fast? Well, one easy way. Nobody blocks him. Anthony Thompson comes up and just completely ignores him. And he doesn't even get touched. And there is Mrs. Collins watching her son play, one of her 19 children. Six DBs in for the Skins. Complete to Johnson. And Johnson is not going to make it to the first down marker. So the Cardinals do not convert on third down again. Nine yards regained on the play. They needed 13. What the Skins have done so far to the Phoenix Cardinals is the Phoenix Cardinals' worst nightmare. They've taken the running game completely away, and they've made them throw the ball with Tom Tupa back there at quarterback in must-throw situations. Brian Mitchell back to receive this Rich Camarillo punt. Mitchell from his own 36 finds some daylight in Cardinal territory. First, we created the LS400 luxury sedan. Now we've taken everything we've learned and condensed it. Introducing the Lexus ES300. All the performance of a sports sedan, all the luxury of a Lexus. When you buy a Super Color Special TV antenna from Radio Shack, you get a great value. And Radio Shack has everything you need to make installation easy. Best of all, you get Super Color's advanced technology for the clearest picture and sound possible. Reception so lifelike, it's incredible. Hey, great picture, huh, Howie? Uh, no. And Super Color antennas are here just in time for football. Two great antennas for city, suburban, or long range from 2488. Only at Radio Shack, America's technology store. Dear Thompsons, I swear by Thompsons Water Seal, but recently when it ran out, my son finished with another brand. Then it rained. What a difference. Thompsons beat it up, the other brand nothing. Thanks for a product you can believe in. Marvin Snotty, Locust Grove, Virginia. The temperature never drops below Xerox. That's important to remember at a time like this, when it's very dark and very cold. Ah, you did remember Xerox antifreeze. The temperature never drops below Xerox. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Comfort Tech Shoes by Floorshine. Try a pair and get comfortable. Castrol, engineered for today's smaller cars. And by Miller Lite. It's it.
And that's that. In the nation's capital, a battle of NFC East co-leaders, Phoenix and Washington. Skins on top 14 and nothing. As you take a look at Wayne Severe, had to be pleased with that 20-yard return by Brian Mitchell. Their special teams coach, he's very high on Mitchell, and the special teams have made a huge difference in the first two games for the Skins. That return has the Skins at the 45 of Phoenix, first and 10. Complete to Art Monk, and Monk for the first down and a few more. So Art Monk with that pass reception now has caught at least one pass in 119 consecutive games. And he is Mr. Surehands for the Skids. You know what I see going on here now, James? This is kind of like a new kid moving into a neighborhood, and there's always a neighborhood bully and the biggest, strongest guy, and you figure, hey, I'm going to be the new bully. I'll go into his neighborhood, and I'll beat up on him. Well, the Cardinals tried to come in here and beat up on the Redskins, and so far they've caught it straight smack in the nose, and they are flat right now on their tails. The brass youngsters taking on the vets, the old guys. And Biner, fumble! And the Cards look to have recovered. Let's see. Ah, and they signal back to the Skins. And now the officials, now they're trying to sort it out, and we'll wait. And it is, in fact, the Cardinals, a premature signal given by the officials signaling Redskins ball. A good job by Freddie Joe Nunn and company. Look at him stuffing this thing up. Schlereth can't get around the corner. Freddie Joe Nunn strips the ball from Biner. And now Phoenix doing what Phoenix done, has done best in the first part of this season. That's cause turnovers and give their offense some field positions. Matter of fact, the 11th fumble recovery by the Cardinals this year. That's their forte. Joe Bugle calls it smash mouth football. He'll take it. Again, again, again. Why have the great outdoors become an indoor sport? Try Bud Dry. It's dry brewed, not watered down. To drink light, yet satisfied completely. So while we may have some things inside out, refreshment isn't one of them. To compete, you've got to be strong. To win, you've got to be smart. One of us, the few, the proud, the Marines. The Allstate agent who helps insure your home can give you a hand with a plan for life insurance. Your Allstate agent wants to be your agent for life. Allstate life. Financial strength you can count on. It lives in your attic. It steals from you. It's... The space without enough insulation. The Department of Energy recommends R38, or one foot of pink insulation. Owens Corning recommends you call. Ever wonder what goes on inside of one of those stuffy prep schools? You walk past 200 adolescent boys dressed like that? I love the sound of it. Johnny Johnson, the ball carrier, on the first play for the Cardinals. Ken Harvey recovered that fumble, and that ball was everywhere. But right now, look, right between Big, Big Jacoby's legs. Now watch that area. As soon as these legs start moving, you won't be able to see it, but here comes Harvey. Jacoby thought he had it, and Harvey took that ball right away from him. After that five-yard run by Johnson, brings up a second and five for the Cardinals from their own 47. Tupa chased by Charles Mann. Sacked by Charles Mann. A loss of two on a play, the second sack of the season for Charles Mann. And Tupa is not the style of quarterback. You design things so that he can run around. 
Man gets some early pressure on him up front. He has to try to get outside. And that is not the niftiest of quarterbacks out there running in Tom Tupa. And not as nifty a move right now by Charles Mann, who had fifth, a fifth knee operation on that right knee of his. This is not the situation you want here in RFK. Third and long. Eight to be specific. Here comes Mann. Incomplete intended receiver was Ernie Jones. So Phoenix 0 for 3 in third down conversions. And again, as I mentioned, they were 0 for 10 last week against the Eagles. And Randy, you made a big point of that. That third down conversion statistic, not a pleasant one at all for the Cardinals. Well, sooner or later, something like that is really going to come back and bite you. What that means is you're making big plays on first and second down, but you got to convert third downs. Brian Mitchell back to receive this punt. He made a big play last time. Takes it from his own 20. Still on his feet. And dropped at the 29. They say the ball is loose. We'll see what the official signal is. Well, one of them down there is pointing Phoenix ball. Fumble recovery by Phoenix. Phoenix ball, first down. Now that is the 12th fumble recovery by Phoenix this season, and that's one more than they had all of last year. Mitchell, and that is the statistic that has Phoenix 2-0. It was impressive last time. Mitchell caught the punt with guys all over him. He tried it again. Now watch Ken Harvey. He puts the arm and the shoulder right on the ball. The ball is out and it's loose. Look at it laying on the ground, and Zordich gets the fumble recovery. Phoenix with excellent field position at the 29 of Washington. And the play is being stopped. Apparently being reviewed upstairs. Our replay official today is Al Sabato. 9.42 remaining in the first half of the play, Randy, and Phoenix with its best opportunity yet. What they'd be looking for up there is was the ball out before he was on the ground. And as you saw clearly, it wasn't. It's a fumble recovered by Phoenix. There is no way that ball came out when he was on the ground. He was definitely up. Look at it right there. That ball is out and loose. Caused by Ken Harvey, recovered by Michael Zordich. Mm -hmm. Joe Bugle says, I'll take a victory any way possible. Two yards on the ground by John Johnson. You think it's a little hot and humid here? Now they got a big one. Look at Big Joe Jacoby, number 66. That's 315 pounds, a very wet individual. He is sweating, he's tired, and he's also having a heck of a game so far. Second and nine. Complete for the first down, and what a catch by Tim Jordan. A 12-yard pass play from Tupa to Jordan. Walter Reeves, the regular tight end, is out. He's missing this week for the Phoenix Cardinals. He has a bruised knee. But Jordan is actually the better receiver. Watch this concentration. Bats it up with his left hand, spins around, and still makes the catch. Ball at the 15, first and 10. Play action as Johnson slipped. Tupa gets rid of it and is intercepted by Brad Edwards. And Edwards is stopped because there's a flag back at the point of interception. But Edwards takes it into Cardinals territory. We'll get the call from the official. He's, he was ruled down by contact, I think, down about the 7-8 yard line, James, right after the interception.
Tupa should never have thrown this ball. He's being pressured by Charles Mann. Just puts that up for grab, hoping maybe Prohl could come down. That's when he's touched. He's down. It's Redskins the other way when we come back. We got a problem. Any ideas? I've got a contact, sir. Well, get on it then. Secure the area. Get him here now. Post two, position eight. Reverse three and hold. Find him. He's been with the organization for a while. Nice job, sir. With years of training behind them, Napa technicians provide a secret service everyone should know about. We all like to keep our car looking new, so use Armor All Protectant. It makes your car look like new and helps it last longer. And that makes you look pretty smart. Armor All, it keeps you looking good. The one shot that made him a hero yeah, is back to make him a target. I'm going to do something far worse than kill you. Denzel Washington, John Lithgow, Ice-T, Ricochet, Rated R. Starts Friday, October 4th. If you're ever near Durango, Colorado, you will find a road to the sky. Where a hundred years ago, men searched for the gold and silver they saw there. There are over four million miles of roads in Alamo Territory all across America. And every day, with every car nationwide, only Alamo gives you all those miles for free, including a 70-mile stretch along Route 550 in Colorado that takes you right up to the sky. You are now free people. Yes. I root openly for 49ers. No, you cheer for Rams and big offensive weapon Jim Everett. No. Yes. Skins from their own eight. First and ten. Biner on the ground. And Ernest Biner stopped by Eric Hill after a four-yard gain. We'll bring up a second and six. Let's take another look at that interception. Here's Ricky Prohl in motion. He'll go up here and come around. Keep an eye on Tom Tupa. Has very limited options. Once he gets out there and he's being pressured, he can take the sack. He can throw it away and risk, risk getting a grounding penalty, or he can do this. He can put it up for grabs and hope his guy comes down with it. He didn't. Ball is marked at the 13. Second and five for the skin. 7.36 left in the first half to play. Rippin, complete to Monk, incomplete. He dropped it, had it for a second. And the normally sure-handed Art Monk, wishing he could have that one back again. This Phoenix Cardinals defense looks a little bit deflated. They've made a big play. They put their offense back on the field in great field position, only to have the offense mess that up and put them back on the field. They almost look like they're tired, and they, should, they shouldn't be tired from the heat. I mean, it's 100 degrees in Phoenix. Although the players did make one comment coming off the bus, the humidity here a lot worse than in Phoenix. But heat is heat. Third and five from the 13. Incomplete intended receiver was Ricky Sanders, and Sanders roughed up by Lorenzo Lynch. Oh, well, Lynch got very, very lucky not having that flag called right there for unnecessary roughness. I'm surprised there wasn't a flag. That play continued well after the incompletion. Let's watch Lynch, number 29 here. Ball is bobbled. It's clearly gone. Now's the point the play should end. But it doesn't. They keep going. He throws them down on the ground. Phoenix got lucky there. Kelly Goodburn trying to put a foot in this one. Ricky Pro back for the Cardinals. High snap. Goodburn does a nice job with it. Pro from his own 43. And smashed at about the 48. It'll be Phoenix ball with 7-16 when we come back. The Battles of October, the League Championship Series, coming soon. AT&T, the right choice. In the 1975 playoffs, Roger Staubach launched one of the most famous passes in NFL history when he put up the Hail Mary pass. What receiver answered Staubach's prayer? Wide receiver, Golden Richards. Tight end, Billy Joe Dupree or wide receiver Drew Pearson. Which would you choose? 
Prop Masters Incorporated of Burbank. Are you having more trouble getting faxes through on the first try? We want you back. Demon DeLuca of New York. Are you saving what you'd hoped on international calls since leaving AT&T? We want you back. For every business that left AT&T trying to save money. For every business that misses AT&T quality. Now you can afford to come back. AT&T Pro Watts. A discount plan that gives you very competitive prices. Switch now and get one month of long distance free. From Toledo to Topeka, from Fort Wayne to Phoenix, every business in America can come back. We want you back. Call 1-800-222-0400. Roger Staubach's favorite clutch receiver was Drew Pearson, who caught the Hail Mary pass. If you said Pearson, you made the right choice. Join us next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern Time when Major League Baseball returns to CBS and the East leading Blue Jays face the Oakland Athletics. And speaking of the A's and the Blue Jays, the A's are in Toronto today and they lead 2-0 in the first inning with a Canseco two-run home run. Canseco and Joe Carter having MVP type of years as you take a look at Jim Hannafin, ex-Cardinals head coach himself. There's a fired up group. They're up 14 nothing and Hannafin wants that offensive line. Now look what you did last time you missed that blitz. We should have scored. I know we had to go 90 yards but you should have scored. On first and 10 this is Johnny Johnson. And Johnson with a nice run for about eight. will bring up a second and two as we look at Johnny Johnson last week we talked about how Johnson wears between a 14 and a half and a 15 shoe depending upon the field and today he has. He has got to be about a 15 on this grass, but Joe Bugle talked about those big feet in that arch, and his arch is a little bruised. And why you see so much Anthony Thompson at times is that arch can't take the stress. They have to pull him and give him a rest. Second and two. Ball at the 43 of Washington. Tupa with time complete to Johnson, and that's enough for the first down. Stopped by Andre Collins, so Johnny Johnson showing his versatility. And again, last week we talked about the rookie season of his which was an impressive one indeed and he would have been all rookie had he not gotten injured he says he's got a burden to live up to on first down Johnson again and Johnson inside the 35 you saw the flag come in late there as Johnson was wrapped up by Mayhew and this will be brought back against the Cardinals. Second holding penalty this afternoon on the Cardinals. Holding 61 offense 10 yards still first down. That's big Lance Smith the seventh year player out of LSU. Right now Phoenix is having one of those days where you take one step forward and two steps back. That's what's happening right now. Let's take an eye right here on 61 the right guard. Let's we'll see what they call. Big Lance Smith working against Johnson. Oh yeah. He just sort of did the old WWF body slam on him. 5.50 left in the first half of play. Cardinals trailing by 14. This is first and 20. And Tupa throws it complete. And boy did he get rid of that one just in the nick of time. John Jackson the receiver. Second year player out of Southern Cal. Tupa and company are back into the no huddle, and now they decide to go back into the huddle. Now, Tupa moved around pretty good because he had bullets and cars and trains and everything else whizzing by him at a pretty good pace most of this play. There's a missed opportunity. He dances around. Good agility by Tupa right there, and it was a nice catch by Jackson putting the ball way up there. Second and five. Cardinals need to get to the 30 for the first down. Tupa chased by Johnson throws on a run incomplete will bring up a third and five and again third down conversions have been plaguing the Cardinals through the early part of the season packed house here at RFK watching this battle of unbeatens Phoenix and Washington James Brown along with Randy Cross 
And it's been, it was an Ernest Biner first quarter, the touchdown run there. Ricky Sanders, touchdown in the second. Washington leads it 14 zip. And Phoenix came in here wanting to think they were contenders. So far, we're looking at pretenders. Third and five. Complete for the first down, and that is the first first down conversion for the Cardinals. Ernie Jones with the catch and the run. And a very cool job by Tom Tupin of critical situation. If they did not have made this, they'd had to kick a 52-yard field goal. Jones wraps it up and heads for the crease in the zone. So the Cardinals 1 of 4 on third down conversions this afternoon. You take a look at Ernie Jones. And right now, Phoenix has got halting momentum. Every time they get going, they kind of stop. And they get going, and they stop. They need to take this all the way in. Then they have some real momentum. 4 of 15 left in the first half. And Thompson with an excellent run up near the first down marker. We'll see where they spot it. And it's enough. Anthony Thompson finally stopped by Monty Coleman. And that big offensive line for Phoenix that went into this game wanting to establish the run and couldn't do very much for the first quarter and a half is finally getting their big bodies on some redskin defenders and opening some holes. You saw the shot of Richie Pettibone, assistant head coach of defense for the Skins, trying to rally his team. Ball on the 14 of Washington, first and 10 for Phoenix. This is Flagler. And Flagler still on his feet as he scooted away. Kurt Gouveia finally on the stop, but Terrence Flagler picked up seven on a play, and Randy Terrence Flagler just re-signed by the Cardinals this week. Well, Terrence has been in Dallas, and he's been in Phoenix, and he's been in San Francisco, and now he's back in Phoenix. And that was a good churning run. I think that play was whistled dead before it even started, Randy. Looked to be motion in the backfield of Phoenix. We'll get the call, though. It might have been Johnson trying to get a bit of an early head start. Illegal motion. Number 39 is leaning. Five yards. Still second down. Good eyes, Randy. How do you spell that in the rule book, anyway? <laughs> leaning. <laughs> leaning. I've heard of procedure, and I've heard of offsides. I've heard you know, there's intentional this and intentional that, but leaning. L-E-N-I-N, no G. <laughs> Second and eight. Ball on the 12. Complete to Jordan, and Jordan run out on the right side by Monty Coleman. A pickup of two on the play. The Redskins are bringing a big blitz that time, and for this Phoenix offense, that's why the tight end position is so critical. It's their kind of their hot receiver, their checkoff receiver. The guy they go to when they get these big blitzes is the tight end. Jordan did a fine job right there. They really miss Walter Reeves, though. Walter Reeves is a 265-pound tight end. You don't see one defensive back bring down Reeves. Third and five from the nine. Intercepted, Wilbur Marshall. There's a flag on the field, a late flag thrown. As Tom the penalty is declined. First down this way. Two in the morning. A very emotional Wilbur Marshall. Wow. What an opening. He's trying to squeeze that in that little gap like that. There is no way. Now watch Wilbur. I am a running back. Get out of my way. Don't knock me over. Look at him go. A small touch, 
a certain look. It's the little things that are worth the most. Which is why every Delta faucet gives you more than you'd ever expect for the money. Giving you the money for those things you can't even put a value on. Delta, the way water is brought to life. First we created the LS400 luxury sedan. Now we've taken everything we've learned and condensed it. Introducing the Lexus ES300. All the performance of a sports sedan, all the luxury of a Lexus. Bud Light, the clean, fresh taste won't fill you up and never let you down. You can taste it, you can feel it, you know you've got it right. It's everything else is just light. Just keep your Bud Light shining. Everything else is just light. you got to shine on. Everything else is just light. And let's look, take a look at Ricky Prohl. He's the go-to guy now with Tom Tupa. Tupa's thinking, okay, he's going to break open. I know he's going to break open. I'm going to throw it to him. He forces it, and Wilbur Marshall gets an easy pick. On the ground, Biner. And Biner with a pickup of three. Three hard fought yards that time by Ernest Biner. One forty-four left in the first half of play. Washington on top. 14 to zip. And Phoenix has burned off one of its timeouts, leaving two. Washington with its full complement of three remaining. And Joe, Joe Gibbs and company's goal right now is to not make a mistake, just get in there, pound the ball, get some first downs, and not give Phoenix an opportunity to make any big plays, which is exactly what Joe Bugle has been telling Timmy McDonald on the far sideline. Coming up on the NFL Today Dockers Halftime Report, Greg and Terry will have all the scores, highlights, and, of course, the latest information. And that will include a look at Buffalo's high-powered offense. That's coming up on the Dockers Halftime Report. Tom Tupa, having just thrown his third interception of the season, making only his fifth start in his four-year career. And, well, he's learning something today. It's all decisions. You throw it or you don't throw it. There are times when it's better to eat a sack or throw the ball into the stands. Second and seven. Biner, the lone back. Biner, the ball carrier. As he scoots ahead up near the 15, another four-yard scoop by Ernest Biner. And Phoenix burns yet another timeout, leaving one for the Cardinals. And you heard a cheer here in the stadium, and that was because of that score there. Redskins fans cheering the fact the Giants are trailing by 10. And they don't know who to root for in this game. <laughs> they're completely confused here. They wish this is a draw. They, they're hoping for a tie or an earthquake. Minnesota up early on the Niners. Look speaking, at Green Bay, 5-0. I wonder who hit the home run on that one. Speaking of San Francisco, there's been so much talk about Joe Montana. I mean, you hear one time he's going to be out only week one. Another report says the first month of the season you've played with him. What's the deal with Joe Montana? I think with all the abuse Joe's put on that elbow for all these years, Joe Montana won't play in 1991. At all. I think he sits out the 91 season and shoots for 1992. It's just he's done too much to that. But look at the list already. Rosenbaugh, he does that in practice. Cunningham gets his against the Packers. Dave Craig busts the thumb up in the, up in the uh, kingdom. It's been a rough year already on quarterback. You're the backup quarterback. Third and three from the 15. Rip complete to Biner. And Biner has the first down. Clock continues to wind down. 1.30 left to play in the first half. Skins on top by 14. Phoenix was burning off those timeouts and Holtz was stopping them and getting a chance to get some sort of points out of this first half, but it looks like that won't happen. Biner on the draw. And Biner up to the 25, a five-yard game stopped by Tim McDonald. 
We'll bring up a second and five. Finer already in the first half, 15 carries for 62 yards. This is the 16th carry. And he's got the first down, plus five. Stopped by Lorenzo Lynch. Under a minute to play in the first half. And Washington calls a timeout. Joe Gibbs left with two. With the ball here where it is on about the 34 yard line, James, start thinking Chip Lowmill. You get the ball to about the four, let's say the 40 yard line. You're in Chip Lowmiller territory. So right now, they have got about 25 yards to go on the next couple of pass plays, and you can get another field goal to go up 17 0. Thought I was working along with my good friend Moses Malone. You said about the foe. <laughs> and just a reminder that the NFL Today halftime report coming your way. Greg and Terry with all the scores and highlights from around the league and an interesting discussion with Jim Kelly about the no huddle offense. I'm sure Terry Bradshaw had a lot of fun talking about that. Terry got awfully excited, as a matter of fact, in a pregame show talking about the beauty of calling your own offense. You can tell the excitement in Terry's face when he starts talking about anything that's sandlot. You go over here, you go over there, you go, over, you go long, you go short. I'll throw it to the long guy, you just go short. Right now, the Skins trying to get into field goal territory, as you mentioned, first and 10 from the 34. Rip to Irvins. Ricky Irvins. An exciting runner indeed, and you see why as he takes it up one yard shy of the first down marker. This guy really showed out in training camp for the Washington Redskins, a rookie out of USC. You've seen him. The old Bruins have had a little trouble with the guys from USC. His senior year, he was banged up. He was hurt. His junior year, he's MVP in the Rose Bowl, rushes for 1,300 and something yards. Look at the size of them. They talk about the Smurf little receivers. This guy's 5'7". Of course, he's 200 pounds, but he's 5'7". Lightning quick and strong. Second and one. All at the 43. Incomplete intended receiver that time was Ricky Sanders. Now, he can jump, but not quite that high. And, Randy, you talked about Chip Lowmiller getting in his territory in college. He once booted a 62-yarder. You made a nice distinction there. Oh, yeah, they get to work on that tee. <laughs> but I think 60 yards on a day like this would be within his range. So that puts them, oh, you know, about another 10, 15 yards away from being legitimate field goal territory. His career long, a 56-yarder. Third and one. Irvins. Irvins has the first down and a whole bunch more. Now you see why. The fans and Gibbs awfully excited about the potential of that young man. 13-yard scamper, first and 10 from the 44. Rippin to Irvin's again. And it's been the Rippin and Irvin show thus far. This has been a textbook two-minute drill right now. Mark Rippin to Ricky Irvin's. And it's been their show during this two-minute drive. This is the kind of thing you start practicing in the first day of training camp. You practice the last two minutes of the first half, and you practice the last two minutes of the second half. Day in, day out. Right now, the Redskins are executing their two-minute drill like they're back in the practice fields in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and running it against just sort of the, the fourth, fifth team on the uh, red defensive side. As a nine-year assistant here in Washington, running the offense, Joe Bugles seen it all before. Rough first half for Tom Tupa. See the timeouts remaining. Washington will use that last timeout for the next field goal that Chip Lowmiller is going to kick. And right now, they are well within his range. Clark to the far side, Monk to the near side. And second and four. Biner, the lone back. Complete to Riggs. And make that Middleton, Ron Middleton, the big tight end, takes the ball inside the 30 to the 27, and Low Miller will get his opportunity as Washington burns off its last timeout. Give you some idea of the strength of this guy's leg. If a 60-yard field goal is a driver in golf, 
If he's kicking a 44 or 45 yard field goal, that's about a four iron for him. Mm -hmm. And he might not even take this four iron all the way back. It'll sort of pop this thing so it goes about halfway into that net. Well, he's having a John Daly title of the season. Long drives indeed, so this ought to be a chip shot. Quite sure what they're talking about on the field here. You know, special teams coach Wayne Severe told us a great thing on Friday. He says, I get my kickers in the meeting. I tell them, you're not a football player. You're never going to be a football player. Be a great kicker. If you're a great kicker, the guys will appreciate you. They appreciate Low Miller. This is a 44 yard attempt by Low Miller. And it's no good. So Chip Low Miller. Who had 14 straight regular season field goals coming into today's game misses a 44 yarder. And he got plenty of leg on that. See him explaining to Raven Caldwell there. I kind of missed it off to the right. He had that thing three quarters of the way up the crossbar, but he pushed it to the right. Big sigh of relief there by Tom Tupa. Well, let's take another look at this. The snap's good, the place is good. He just pushes us out a little too far out to the right, and he knows it as soon as he kicks it. Little body English, but that won't help. So the end of the first half sees Washington on top by the score of 14 to nothing. Greg and Terry will be along right after this. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Lexus and the new ES300 Sports Sedan. AT&T, the right choice. And by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. All right, Greg, thank you very much. And halftime here in Washington in the Battle of the Unbeatens. Washington leads at 14 to nothing. James Brown along with Randy Cross. And Randy, you thought a quick start was most important in this game, but more so for Phoenix, it's been Washington and Ernest Biner. Washington came into this game ready to do some serious hitting and some serious blocking. And Ernest Biner on the first drive just sort of set the tone for the rest of the day. Just drives and blasts through a couple of tackles for this score right here. And they've really dominated from the statistical standpoint. Not only has Biner really been good running the ball, he's been good catching the ball. Later in the, in the first quarter, a little run here off a ball that's flipped to him by Mark Rippon. Now watch these moves, and then he just turns on some of that speed. This is a Redskin team that Joe Gibbs was worried about. Are these guys ready to play after Monday night? These guys were extremely ready to play, and look at this difference. You look at the 219 total yards by the Skins, as you mentioned, Randy, 122 of those total yards belong to Ernest Biner. The big stat for Phoenix, two turnovers. Tom Toop, of course, not helping matters throwing any, but they forced the Redskins into two turnovers, and that's kept it as close as it is. And we'll be ready to start the second half between Phoenix and Washington right after this. So, Jimmy, my man, you ever miss uh, being a civilian? You mean banging my head against the wall to get ahead? Going and hock up to my eyeballs for the right house or the right car? No, I don't miss it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe I miss the cars a little. <laughs> Relax. You're among friends. Levi's 100% cotton dockers. Can a con and a cop pretend to be married? No way. What if they got to live in Palm Springs? Now you're talking. Don't miss. Yes, I love you. Tonight. Now a word from Murphy Brown. Years ago when doctors told a woman she was pregnant, they'd say the rabbit died. Well, today I, I mean a woman can take any number of home pregnancy tests to see if I'm, she's pregnant. Maybe it just needs new batteries. Is she or isn't she? Season premiere of Emmy-winning Murphy Brown, Monday. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why more people are winning with the heartbeat of America. Little Caesars Pizza, where you always get two great pizzas for one low price. And by Levi's Dockers. Relax, you're among friends. The Iwo Jima Memorial over in Arlington, Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C., as we take a look at Phoenix trailing 
by 14. And the story of Phoenix's offense, struggle certainly is the key word, Randy. This is an offense for the Phoenix Cardinals. You just kind of go, yeah, pooey. let's forget about this. We come out of second half, we're going to come out, we're going to run the ball, we're going to throw the ball to our guys, as you see here at the bottom two possessions with INTs. Those were not really very good plays by, by uh, Tupa. He just threw the, both those balls up for grabs. Let's see if we got any napkins up here in the booth here to work with that. That was a pretty yeah, interesting a, discussion. That was a clear pooey. <laughs> Chip Low Miller will be kicking off for the Redskins. Back Terrence Flagler and Randall Hill. And it's Hill five yards deep in his own end zone. And Phoenix will start it off at its own 20. Tom Tupa looking for a better second half than the first. Not a bad completion rate, but the interceptions, interceptions that is, hurt big time. And the one thing that makes that comparison close as it is, is the running game for the, for the Washington Redskins. Rippon hasn't had to throw very much. If Washington has to throw over 30 times a game, then you got them in your position. If they're just running the ball down your throat, you're in some serious trouble. Johnny Johnson, the lone back for the Cardinals on first and 10. Tupa to Jordan. And Jordan tackled by Wilbur Marshall. A gain of four. Very poor decision by Jordan there. He had Lance Smith, the right guard, number 61, right out in front of him. Had a blocker, and he cut back inside. It was clear to the outside. Jordan, the second-year player from Indiana. Now take a look here. Here's Smith, 61. He's going to make a decision. He's got the blocker. That's what's referred to by a lot of offenses, offensive coaches as running to the nearest defender. And that was a big blocker in front of him. Second and six. And the Cardinals keep it on the ground. Not much gain there. Well, Coach Bugle there call it his old Washington play, the counter trade with the right-hand side. And the Redskins just flat stuffed it. I think they've seen that before in they, practice. They, they practice against that every once in a while. <laughs> There's big Eric Williams. Was acquired by the Redskins from the Detroit Lions. He's really made a big difference along with Tim Johnson in the middle of that defense along with Matt Millen. Third and five. Anthony Thompson, the lone back. Nickel defensive package in for Washington. Flags on the play as Thompson gets it across the first down marker, but there were flags on the play as Johnny Johnson moved into the backfield and seemed to have caused some problems there. Might be leaning again. <laughs> Illegal motion, number 39 offense, five yard penalty, will replay third down. Leaning. Leaning. <laughs> That's now paragraph four, subchapter A in the rule book. Leaning. And Johnny Johnson there has got it twice. Here's Johnny Johnson. Look at that bob right here. Do you see that head bob down like that? Automatic. They'll call that every single time. I'm kind of surprised they didn't whistle that play dead because it was pretty obvious in the beginning. It was a quick offensive motion. Third and ten. Incomplete intended receiver Ricky Pro and Pro dipping his head Not aware of the kind of pressure that Tom Tupa was under With the kind of pressure the skins are putting on Tupa right now Tupa has to throw the ball to spots He has to take it for granted He's throwing it to the right spot because by the time the ball gets to where he throws it at Tupa's been on the ground for at least a second or two Mitchell back for the skins Camarillo punting for the Cardinals Mitchell from his own 32. Across the 45 to about the 46-yard line. A 13-yard return for Brian Mitchell. Double header Sunday coming your way next week here on CBS Sports. Washington at Cincinnati. Others will see the L.A. Rams at San Francisco in game two. And, of course, it all gets started with the NFL Today Show, 1230 Eastern Time. Greg, Terry, Leslie, and Pat O'Brien.
Yep, Mitchell fumbled that ball. When he fumbles it, it goes forward and out of bounds. And you can't advance the ball like that by fumbling out of bounds. Watch this right here, right? Now that ball is out of there and it's squirting back behind Mitchell. And they'll place that at the spot it was fumbled, not where it went out of bounds. Which is the 42. Viner, no long setback. And Rippin. Not in the grasp, it's complete to Clark. Now, Randy, last year that would have been an in the grasp play, but there wasn't another defender coming at Rippin, so apparently they let the play go. But no game. That was enough, enough grasp for two sacks last year. <laughs> Guy got near a quarterback. If he breathed on him, they called it. Look at Waller. He's got him. He's dragging him down. As long as there isn't, there isn't the second or third defender that is a threat, a physical threat to the quarterback, no one else was near him, they're not going to call that. They're going to allow the quarterback to flip that thing off. Freddie Joe Nunn would argue, as would Jim Waller, who doesn't get credit for the sack. Second and ten. Incomplete intended receiver, Gary Clark. On that play, the nose guard, Waller, almost got hit square in the face by that pass. They do have defenses where he jumps back. You know, he, he says, I get to play linebacker. It's great. He goes, I'm in the middle of the defense. Look at him right here. Watch Waller. Now, I don't think he's had the drop here as much as he's sort of been blocked into that position. What was that? He flaked like a bug. Like a fly. Dang, what was that hitting me? Seriously big bug. Third and ten. Monk to the near side. Ripping. Going for Monk. And it's complete for the first down. A great catch by Art Monk with Jay Taylor draped all over him. 14-yard pass play. James, as nice of a catch as that is, unbelievable throw. You're looking at a right-handed quarterback sprinting full speed to his left, gets a little second to set up, and puts this thing on a rope. Woof. That was a nice job by Mark Rippon. And what does Monk do? Puts a nice little move on Taylor working against him there, 27, comes back to the ball, and shields the defender from the ball with his body. 11-31 left in the third period of play. This is Biner, and Biner galloping within two yards of the first down marker. We'll call it a nine-yard game. Stopped by Eric Hill. 17 carries for 80 yards on the afternoon for Ernest Biner. Watch the hole open up right in here. It has been open all day long for Ernest Biner. He starts on side. Shoreth gets a nice block on Jack's 53. Look at the size of that gap. That's mm. Big Jacoby sealing off one side. Shoreth seals off the linebacker on the other side. It's a four-yard wide hole. Second and one. Rippin with time going up top for Monk. Incomplete. Now a flag was thrown on a play along the route that Art Monk was running. I think we're going to see a little defensive holding. Monk put a little move on him. They were in a cluster. And when he broke, I believe he pulled on his jersey. Lorenzo Lynch looked to be the guilty party. We have no penalty on the play. It was illegal contact call, but since the quarterback rolled out of the pocket, there is no foul. Pass is incomplete. Third down. I love it when these guys know all these rules like that. Instantly. No, it's great, and that is true. Illegal contact, when you're back in the pocket, you can't touch the receiver after five yards. But once that quarterback rolls out and breaks the body of the, of the pocket down, then it's free game. Contact is legal. Net effect, third and one. Big Russ Grimm, the former All-Pro guard, is in as a tight end right now for the Redskins. Timeout, Washington. That's their first timeout. Well, you heard it. That leaves Washington with two. Bulletin from Chevy Truck. Now get $1,000 cash back on every new 1991 Chevy full-size. 
the best cashback offer on America's best-selling pickup. Now through September 25th, $1,000 on every new 1991 Chevy full-size pickup. Every half ton, three-quarter ton, one ton. Every two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, all with $1,000 cash back. You must take retail delivery from dealer stock by September 25th. See your Chevy dealer for details and get $1,000 cash back now. In trying to make an artistic statement, one should be careful not to let one's personal aroma do the talking. In order not to offend the critics, I recommend Right Guard Sports Stick. It provides maximum protection and the freshest scents, a sublime palette of odoriferous emanations. After all, a true artiste should be remembered for his inspiration, not his perspiration. Right Guard Sports Stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. Did you tell your boss you're quitting? No, I'm telling him on Monday. Got any plans yet? A few. No celebrity spokesman. I'm opening a restaurant. No beach volleyball games. How about another Heineken? No lengthy description of the brewing process. None of that is what made Heineken the number one imported beer in America. You got that steady picture? Oh, yeah. I got a few bucks put away. So you want to own a restaurant? No, what I really want to do is be a relief pitcher. <laughs> Well, all kinds of housekeeping was taking place while you were away during that commercial break. Mark Rippon, of course, signaling for a timeout that was charged to the Redskins, but he was trying to tell the officials, hey, the play clock is acting up. In fact, it was Washington reacquires that timeout, so they have their full complement of three. And Joe Bugle needs a big play, and he needs a big play now. He's down 14-0 to a team that is just taking the ball and running away and hiding with it. They got to stop. Biner. And this is Gerald Riggs, and Riggs has a first down and more to spare. Inside the 30 stop by Lorenzo Lynch. Well, if you think the defense is thinking Biner, we're going to stop Biner. Put him in motion. Don't even give him the ball. Watch this truck coming at you. Wolf. Riggs go through, goes through a gaping hole, gets a nice block from Johnson, the tight end, and Russ Grimm lined up as a tight end on that side. And that was just a gap in the defense. Ten minutes to play in the third quarter of play. Skins on top, 14 to nothing. On first and ten, Rippin pumps. Goes up top, looking for Clark. Touchdown, Washington. There's a flag on a play. But Gary Clark... Right now celebrating, we'll see if he can continue it. There's a lot of contact over there between Robert Massey and Gary Clark, and that would be the call. Illegal contact, number 40 on the defense. I'm going to ask the Klein, touchdown. Gary Clark mindful of not having a penalty called on him for excess celebration, which has happened to him. So he goes to the sideline and gets a towel. Cook claimed he was fanning himself. And Low Miller's point after is good, and Washington out in front by three touchdowns. One time from the end zone here. The pump fake right here is about the same time as the collision occurs. Good decision by Rippon. He sees it happen. He saw Massey fall down. You see 40 there chasing Clark. Nice play by the Redskins. Recently, these people walked out of Little Caesars with extra pepperoni and cheese without paying for it. Extra pepperoni. Extra cheese. Without paying for it. It's Lutz a Lutz again. Extra pepperoni and extra cheese on two pizzas without paying extra. Lots of lots of. At 898, it's a steal. The driver of this car adds something special to his motor oil. So does the driver of this car. They both use STP oil treatment. For drivers on a racetrack or drivers on a fast track, STP. 
The Allstate agent who helps insure your car can give you a hand with a plan for life insurance. Your Allstate agent wants to be your agent for life. Allstate Life. Financial strength you can count on. The Texas State Armadillos are a little short on talent. We'll be the laughing stock of college football. Blow the whistle! Blow the whistle! What do you think we are now? Hold on, John. Fumble! Again! Fumble Laya! Watch more! Fumble Ruski! That's better! This could be a long season. We need to get wild! Necessary roughness. We need to hot hell! Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, September 27th at theaters everywhere. A 28-yard pass from Mark Rippon to Gary Clark. As the skins out in front by the score of 21 to nothing. A seven-play drive covering 58 yards. And you see the time off of the clock, 3:13. Randall Hill will take it from his own four. And Hill. Rope tie. At the 16. Let's take a look at the touchdown up here, way at the top. That's Clark. He's working against Massey, also at the top of the screen. Massey seems to be looking in at the quarterback because when he fake, pump fakes, he stops. Then the collision occurs. Look at that. Massey will be stumbled and knocked down almost. Clark comes clean. Good read by Rippon. Gary Clark, four catches for 61 yards on the afternoon as an injured Phoenix player being helped off the field, Michael Zordich. It's an easy place to get dinged up is on those kickoff returns because those guys coming down for the kickoffs and the kickoff teams, especially for a good special team group like the Redskins, they don't care. I mean, they don't care about their bodies. So that gives you some idea how much they care about your body. And the guy who made the tackle was Brian Mitchell, who said it yesterday. He doesn't care. He plays reckless. First and 10 for the Cardinals at their own 16. 941 left in the third. And Tupa goes to Johnson. And Johnson. Maybe two yards. Stopped by Eric Williams. We heard on the NFL Today show that Mike Ditka was going to pump up his troops and had been all week. Reminding them of last year, so far the lesson being executed on the field. Boy, look at Philadelphia spanking on Dallas. Same happened in the Niners up in Minnesota. That pass rush must be getting after Steve Young. Tupa sidearm in the pass intended receiver Ricky Pro incomplete. Will bring up yet another third down. You caught that quick shot of Joe Bugle. He is not happy right now because Tom Tupa is getting pressure and he's getting it down around his legs which does not enable him to throw when he's stepping forward. So these balls, if you'll notice, are all hitting short. He's got to get better protection up in the middle in front of him so he can step forward and into his throws. Brings up a third and eight. Washington counters defensively with six defensive backs. Ernie Jones to the near side. Randall Hill to the far side for the Cardinals. Marshall chasing Tupa, who throws it complete to Jones for the first down. So Tom Tupa finds Ernie Jones, and there's a flag right in front of Tom Tupa. And it looks like it's going to go against Fred Stokes. Unnecessary roughness, a little rough in the passer after the throw. The play first. A good job of athletic ability here by Tupa, because he's getting the pressure we were talking about, but he rolls out and avoids it. And then Stokes and Marshall put him on the ground. And that is a combination to have on you. Okay, we got, we've had a lean-in. Now here's a kick to the head. He's going to put him down. Now where's the kick to the head? Hmm. A mind reader. <laughs> well, Wilbur Marshall, black belt in karate, knows how to hit. Ball is at the 47-yard line of Phoenix. First and 10. Johnson. 
in a pile, maybe two yards for John Johnson. And while we've got a break, let's check in up in New York with Greg Gumbel. JB, how about a little baseball for you? Down in Atlanta, Sid Bream's 10th home run of the year is a big one. Bases loaded, bottom of the first off, Dodger pitcher Ramon Martinez. Atlanta starting the day with a half game lead in the National League West. They're now in the second, 5-0 Atlanta, JB. All right, Greg, and talking about coming off of the injured list, Sid Bream back in action for the past couple of three weeks. What a nice way to contribute. Joe Gibbs has been getting a lot of contributions, especially from Ernest Biner offensively. Right now, squad is looking at a second and nine. Make it second and eight for the Cardinals. And it looks like the play clock expired on him. Well, Joe Bugle likes, likes his quarterbacks to run down the clock, but I think Tupa got a little carried away there. A little too low, Play huh? game, offense, five yards, still second down. Joe Bugle indicated it did not bother him that his team, although 2-0, came in as nine-point underdogs, but the players had a different story for us, Randy. Well, Bugle's pretty fired up by coming back here to Washington, J.B., and, you know, he, he expected his team to be a little bit more well thought of, but they've, they've proven otherwise today. Second and 13. Going up top for Ernie Jones and overthrows him. Jones covered nicely that time by Martin Mayhew and a little help from Danny Copeland. Well, we just saw Greg Gumbel show us that grand slam by Breen. Join us next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern time when Major League Baseball returns to CBS and the East leading Toronto Blue Jays face the Oakland A's. And Joe Carter, Jose Canseco will do their best. Right now, Toronto trailing by three runs, bottom of the fourth inning there. Well, Gene Tennis doing a nice job in place of the injured Cito Gaston. And there's Joe Bugle, and he is concerned. He's got to get a big play now. He's going to need it. It's third and 14. Tupa with all kinds of time. Throws an interception. Second pick of the day by Wilbur Marshall. penalty for excess celebrating Wilbur Marshall with his second interception of the afternoon and second of the season a 54 yard interception return and Washington commandingly out in front 28 to nothing Marshall will be about a thousand dollars lighter in the pocket after today's game giving away two balls it's the second one in the second one into the crowd at five hundred dollars a piece Tupa gets plenty of time the problem here, another decision problem. He feels the pressure, wants to put it up, and Marshall's there the whole time. Watch this rugby move. I'm going to pitch it. No, I'm not. I was just kidding. Johnny Johnson falls down. Now, look at the blocking he gets. He's weaving like a halfback. You know, in the NFL nowadays, you can have athletic ability. You can have enthusiasm, but you better not have a personality, or they'll throw a five-yard flag on you for demonstration. How would you like a new car warranty so complete? It covers your car from bumper to bumper. Every nut, every bolt, every part, with no deductible for three years or 36,000 miles. We thought so. That's why it covers the Chevy Lumina and every other Chevy we offer. The cars more people depend on. That's today Chevrolet. 24-hour stakeout. 
Oh, here I'm coming. Your equipment better work. And in close quarters, your deodorant better work overtime. That's why Sure made new Pro Stick for men to protect for over 24 hours. In close quarters, we didn't want Pro Stick to come on strong and fade early. New Pro Stick has a long lasting ingredient so our scents don't come on too strong but protect for over 24 hours. Got it. Let's we'll call it a night. You, know. you mean a day? Try new Sure Pro Stick for men. The Pro works overtime every time. I gotta meet her. Down, boy. Well, it's now or never. Attention, shoppers. You're at a romantic dinner at her place. Candlelight, wine, something with a little spinach in it. And for dessert, humble pie. If she sees your dandruff. I don't have dandruff. Fine. Use your regular shampoo. I can't have dandruff. IL-9. You mean you use head and shoulders? Yeah. But you don't have dandruff. Right. Neither will she. Head and shoulders. Hi. Because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. The screen says it all. Touchback. There's Wilbur Marshall, the man just returned this thing for a touchdown. Here he lines up right there. Keep an eye on him. He mirrors the quarterback, and watch what he does. You tell me he's not watching Tom Tupa's eyes. Every time Tupa moves and moves his head, he's right there. I don't know how Tupa didn't see him. It's a heck of a target. Look at that fake pitch. Now the blocking. Getting some blocking from Charles Mann from Stokes. Made it look easy. Looked like, looked like Biner on that run. Yeah. First and 10. Thompson. Drop. Bobby Wilson, the rookie. Playing in a place like this, if your emotional edge is down and you're not playing well, this team can get on you like an avalanche. And right now, the Redskins are all over the Cardinals. Don't have to say much more than that. Three interceptions today by Tom Tupa have been a momentum difference for the Redskins. Second and 15. Complete to Jordan. And Jordan, about five to six yards shy of the first down marker. Well, it's third and seven, so you can count on the Redskins being in a three-man line and bringing at least one linebacker and getting after Tom Tupin. this afternoon. Mitchell back. Camarillo to punt. Mitchell from the 30. Across midfield. He's going to go. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. There's a flag back near midfield. We'll see whether it nullifies this 70-yard punt return by Brian Mitchell. That's usually an illegal block in the back when it happens like that. Illegal block in the back during the return. Number 50, 10 yards, first down. That's Raymond Caldwell. 
Listen to this crowd. They are out for blood. They don't get their extra touchdown. They're going crazy here. And there's Caldwell. They put called him for pushing the back. Left side of the screen. Let's watch Caldwell right there. Yep, he's working on center, Connie Kawhi. And he pushed him right in the back. Nullified a 70-yard punt return for Mitchell. Would have been his second of the year. The Battles of October. The League Championship Series coming soon. Hey, how many cooking classes have we taken together? I lost count. I don't know. We are getting pretty good at this. We should open a restaurant. Open the wine and we'll talk about it. There is a wine that's perfect for the lighter, more delicate flavors of today's cooking. Time, this is a great sauvignon blanc. Mm, it really makes the dinner, doesn't it? I'm taking credit for the scallops. Who gets credit for the wine? Me. <laughs> oh, of course. Ernest and Julio Gallo present their 1989 Sauvignon Blanc. It's time for a change to Gallo. Seven years ago, Nick Styles put him away for life. I got things to live for. Now he's waiting for revenge. So come on! Denzel Washington, John Lithgow, Ice T, Ricochet, Rated R. Starts Friday, October 4th. Love her, hold her, and remember our simple formula. At Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. Bulletin from Chevy Truck. Now get $1,000 cash back on every new 1991 Chevy full size. The best cash back offer on America's best selling pickup. Now through September 25th, $1,000 on every new 1991 Chevy full size pickup. Every half ton, three quarter ton, one ton, every two wheel drive, four wheel drive, all with $1,000 cash back. You must take retail delivery from dealer stock by September 25th. See your Chevy dealer for details and get $1,000 cash back now. You're watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. First and 10 from the 44, Washington. Final. Six yards on a run by Ernest Biner, stopped by Aeneas Williams. And there's Mr. Nice Guy, Craig Cup, the backup quarterback, number seven. And I, you're not, no matter how many interceptions Tom Tuba may throw, no matter how hobbled he might get, I don't think you'd see Craig Cup. Mm -hmm. He's a guy that Joe Bugle says he's got a major league arm, but they really want to take it easy on this guy, bring him along slowly. He is a grabber. He's the kind of guy that says thank you. Somebody says nice pass, oh, thank you very much. Very unusual. Second and three. Middleton in motion. Biner, the ball carrier. First down. Nineteen carries on the afternoon for a Biner, 92 yards. Let's watch Big Joe Jacoby. He's playing right tackle. He's at the top of your screen working against Faulkner, number 94 for Phoenix. He and Schlereth run a little slip block. Watch Jacoby, earth mover. Uh, that's not holding. Look at him pounding on that guy. Oof. That's what you're going to see Washington do the rest of this game. They are going to play like Mike Tyson boxes right in your face. Biner. Crushed. Tim McDonald and Michael Zordich. Only two on the play, a hard earned two. Well, the 55,000 plus here at RFK have had plenty to cheer about. They're Redskins battling the unbeaten Phoenix Cardinals coming into the contest, lead it convincingly 28 to nothing. 320 left in the third period of play. James Brown along with Randy Cross. And it's been the Ernest Bynum show by and large. Second and eight. Play action. Complete for the first down to Gary Clark. Aeneas Williams on the stop. Gary Clark is one guy who has learned to play through pain, Randy. We were mentioned earlier, James, about his hamstrings. His hamstrings have been bothering him now for three or four years. 
He says it's like somebody tugging on the muscle inside your leg. You can only run so fast. He says, I can't get full speed. Well, if he's not full speed now in the last couple of years, the things he's been able to do, it's a scary thought to know what he'd be doing at full speed. 2.24 left in the third. First and 10 from the 32. Final. For an update, let's head back up to New York and Greg Gumbel. Well, James, at Soldier Field in Chicago, the Bears are losing their lead slowly but surely. Rodney Hampton from six yards out for the Giants with the extra point. The Giants are within three. It's 13-10 Chicago in the third. Back to Washington, J.B. and Randy. All right, Greg, and I know we talked with Joe Gibbs yesterday, and we had posed a question about whether or not the Giants might be slipping a bit. He says, I'm not convinced. There are a lot of guys up there who've been waiting. We've been trying to outweigh each other. Yeah, he says, I think they're going to outweigh me. It's been 12 years. I've been waiting for that team to go down. He says, I think they're waiting for me to leave. Minor. First down. Eric Hill on the tackle. JB, we can talk about Viner till we're blue in the face with the superlatives. The guy's having a great game. But this offensive line in front of Ernest Biner is opening up holes, and it's nothing new for this group. Look at the yardage Biner's been getting over the last seven games. Unbelievable. But that big offensive line in front of him, and he's got guys like Johnson and Orr and Middleton coming out of the H-back position to tie it in. And that whole offensive line have just been tearing this Phoenix Cardinals front up. Miners rushed for 22 times. His career high, 39 carries against Chicago. On first down, it's Biner again. And Biner, nowhere to go that time. Gang tackle, led by Aeneas Williams. Well, Joe Bugle better find a way to rally these Cardinals and get a little fire in them for this fourth quarter because this Washington Redskin team has the ability to make games extremely unpleasant and ugly for visitors in the fourth quarter when this crowd gets on you. Well, that's the end of the third quarter with the score. Washington 28, Phoenix nothing. Our coverage will continue after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. This is CBS. Remember to join us next Sunday for a doubleheader coverage of the NFL on CBS as the Redskins take on the Bengals in Game 1 and the Rams travel to San Francisco in Game 2. Coverage begins at 12.30 Eastern with the NFL Today. Second and 11 for Washington. Ball at the 16 of Phoenix. This is Riggs. And Riggs for maybe three. 
And the Redskins are back down here in the red zone again where they've been absolutely unbelievable this year so far because they've got that ability. They've got the Riggses and the Biners. What makes them extra double dangerous? They got Clark and Monk and Sanders to throw it to. And if Rippon can keep his confidence level up, there's no uh, there's no limit to what this team can accomplish this year. As Gerald Riggs heads to the sidelines, the rookie, Ricky Irvins, whom Joe Gibbs had plenty to say positive about, is in there to replace him. Third and seven from the 13. Rippon throwing. Incomplete intended receiver was Art Monk. So Chip Low Miller will get a chance. Well, last time we goal. talked about Chip mm -hmm. Low Miller, we built him up, we built him up, and the sucker <laughs> pushed it right. Now he's got a nice short one. That might be the problem. He needs him long. But really, I've noticed about him is how fast and high he gets this ball up. No one will block this ball in the middle on Chip Low Miller because he gets this thing about 12 feet off the ground by the time he gets to the defensive line. This is a 29 yarder. And this indeed is a chip shot. So Chip Low Miller boots Washington out in front by 31. different different looks different tastes different lifestyles that's why geo offers you a choice geo metro geo storm geo prism and geo tracker so pick your favorite and get to know geo right around the corner at your chevrolet geo dealers circumstances beyond your control it's good to know that MetLife works hard to pay your claim promptly get met it pays in making an artistic statement one's personal aroma shouldn't do the talking so I use right guard sports stick with maximum protection a true artiste should be known for inspiration not perspiration right guard sports stick anything less would be uncivilized this game summary is sponsored by Coors Light to take a look at the game summary, it should have Ernest Biner all over the place. 109 yards of the 144 on the ground for the Redskins. And the education of Tom Tupa continues in. Randy, a little bit of a long afternoon for him. Just a little bit. You know, you, you want to talk about this game, there's a lot of variables. There's a lot of important things. You could talk about the interceptions. You could talk about a lot of things. Washington in every phase of the football game has just come up, come in this game and beaten up the Phoenix Cardinals. And they're just going to kick him out of RFK and say, look, you don't belong to be 2-0. You don't belong in here. Get out of here. And Randall Hill with yet another kickoff that he's not able to do anything with. So the Cardinals will operate from their own 20. 14-04 left in the game. Washington out in front. 31 zip and Joe Bugle said he did not want to hear hail to the Redskins one time today he's heard it many times he'll be humming it all the way back to Phoenix on the plane it's ingrained at this point Randy look at that score Philadelphia on top of Dallas 17 zip Boy, Dallas ran into a mad Philly defense Dallas had to watch Dallas had to watch these films of this Phoenix team beating Philly last week and go gee we got Philly when they're down Nine sacks against Torrey Aikman today for Philly. Thompson. Anthony Thompson for only two, stopped by Matt Miller. But Troy Aikman's not the only guy today on this Sunday in the NFL that's getting smacked around, pushed around, hurried, sacked, hit. Tom Hoopa, Tupa has been harassed all day long. Look at this. Eight hurries, knocked down six times. 
tell you what, this is the day he would love to forget. And if he's got a short memory, now's the time to use it as soon as this game's over and to forget it. He might say his name is Tom Hooper after today. Second and eight. Thompson. And Thompson explodes ahead for a five-yard gain. We'll bring up a third and three. Charles Mann on the stop. When you talk about Tupin and his interceptions, remember, this is the same guy that in his first start, he was told about 10 minutes before the game that he was going to start against Philadelphia a couple years ago through six interceptions and had the nickname Pick Six, which <laughs> stuck with him for quite a while. He said he would have been a candidate for doing commercials for Depend Underwear. Got a loose group over there on the Washington sideline. They're starting to celebrate a little bit. Third and three. Thompson. Flag on a play as Thompson runs for the first down. So a good second and third effort. By the second year back out of Indiana, Anthony Thompson, and we'll see what the result of this flag is. Was thrown right in the general direction of lead blocker Joe Wolf leading that play on Thompson. Well, I tell you, the ex-offensive lineman has an eye for not only the flag, but the players. Holding, 34 offense, 10 yards, still third down. And that's interesting. Anthony Thompson carried the ball. Joe Wolf was actually wiping his brow on that play. That's on the same page as leaning, <laughs> as you can't run with the ball and hold at the same time. I don't think you can do that. But uh, Joe Wolf, 68, the left guard, was out in front of Thompson on that play. And you got to think that's probably what the officials saw. I think so. I mean, he meant 34, nice run. 68, you were holding. Third and 13 from the 17. And the referee stops the play before it begins. That's their first timeout. A timeout called by Phoenix. And that leaves the Cardinals with two, but trailing by 31. I've made up my mind. I'm going to do it. Why shouldn't I? I'm the one who has to look at myself in the mirror every morning. So before I lose another hair, I'm going to the doctor. I know doctors have treatment programs that are proven to work. More guys are trying them every day. I'm not bad now, but I wouldn't mind looking better. Your doctor can really do something about hair loss. So see your doctor or call this toll-free number. Oil. It's the lifeblood of your engine. That makes your oil filter your engine's most vital organ. That's why Fram keeps going the extra mile to make the best protection even better. Introducing the new Fram Extra Guard. New glass fiber paper stops more dirt than any other filter for the best protection ever. The new Fram Extra Guard. American or import, it's an extra lease on life. And wins Northwest 30 knots gusting to 45 knots. Rain expected to continue till 10. Five inches predicted in the seven county area. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by the U.S. Army, where you get an edge on life. Be all you can be. The Upjohn Company, if you're concerned about hair loss, see your doctor. And by Coors Light, the silver bullet is the right beer now. Joe Bugle, normally extremely effusive and optimistic, not the game plan he had drawn up coming into today. You can tell things aren't going well either for Joe because the wind is starting to blow his hair, and with all that moose he puts in his hair now, I'm surprised that headset doesn't stick to the top of his head. There are a couple of Washington DJs who wanted to know what the deal was with his hair, but John Brandis is protecting his hair, dude. Nice, a cool ice towel. And Tom Toop is going to try not to add to any more of that quarterback hit or interception list. On third and 13, Dupa rolling right. Throws it incomplete, and that one 
was in danger of being picked off. And guess who was in the vicinity? Wilbur Marshall. And boy, did he make Ricky Prohl pay for it. You remember that old saying, James, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say it at all? Well, you might be able to twist it around a little bit. If you don't have anywhere good to throw, don't throw it at all. And he's made these decisions all day long. Look at man. Imagine what he could have done to him if he'd wrapped him up and followed him to the ground. Mm. Doesn't look like that felt very good from the look on Tupa's face. Camarillo back to the dangerous Brian Mitchell from the 30. And Mitchell, there's a flag on the play. Forward progress up near the 47. Prior to the call here on the penalty, a 53-yard punt and a 15-yard return. Well, you saw Tom Tupa, and that's a guy that's been in his back pocket all day long. Wilbur Marshall, everywhere Tupa's looked, that's where Marshall's gone. Wilbur may be uh, begging for a little time at running back next week. Well, Joe Gibbs has a sense of humor, but I don't think he has that good a sense of humor. <laughs> if he gets desperate, he may. Holding during the return, 10 yards, first down. Major League Baseball coming your way next week here on CBS. 2.30 Eastern time. It'll be the East leading Toronto Blue Jays taking on the Athletics. And Randy, do you think the Blue Jays will hold on? You were so accurate predicting the Dodgers and Braves. <laughs> yeah, and I predicted the Cardinals of winning an upset today, too. Ah, <laughs> uh, we won't touch that. <laughs> and Riggs bullying his way forward. Three-yard game. And coming into today, Toronto by four and a half over Boston, five and a half over Detroit. And Cecil Fielder boomed another one today. Boy, the big fella is really putting some grocery bags into that bowl. <laughs> he knocked one completely out of Milwaukee County Stadium yesterday against the Brewers. I mean, it's unbelievable what that guy can do to a baseball. I guess they won't say anything to him about his weight. No. A lot of weight the skins are putting on the Cardinals leading by the score. They beat Phoenix last year here at RFK by 31 zip. 10.56 left in the game. Riggs as Rod Sadler drops him. A loss of one on the play. Other baseball scores. Well, the Braves out in front by eight zip. That holds up of a game and a half lead in the National League West. Mm -hmm. And then next weekend, they go back to L.A. for another three games. Boy. Young folks down in Atlanta playing well. Nip and tuck battle coming into today. One half game lead. Braves on top as a result of that victory in 11 innings last night. 11 innings and it seemed like it took two days with that hour and a half, two hour rain delay right there right after the end of the first inning. Third and eight from the 39. And the play is whistled dead. And it looks like the play clock got ripping this time. Five yard penalty. Foul prior to the snap. Still third down. Well, Randy, apparently the critics knew something about uh, the Cardinals tapping them as nine point underdogs coming into this contest. Well, they'd never been in a game like this. It was this important against a team that allegedly was their style of a team. We're big, we're physical. Let's go in and get in a slugging match. You know, made the same mistake Bone Crusher Smith made in a couple of his fights. I'm big and I'm bad and I'm on my back. Mm -hmm. On third and 13. Rip to Irvins. And Irvins is stopped before he had a chance to do any damage by Lorenzo Lynch, the fifth year. Right corner out of Cal State, Sacramento. So Kelly Goodburn will come on to punt for the Skins. And Ricky Pro hoping that he can get rid of the goose egg on the scoreboard for the Phoenix Cardinals. 9-22 left in the game. Washington on top, 31 to nothing. And good 
Coburn barely gets this one away. And there's a flag back near Goodburn as the ball comes to a rest at the nine yard line. Tyrone Stowe down there in the vicinity of Kelly Goodburn. Well, the question is, is this roughing the kicker or running into the kicker? Because it would appear that they were that Stowe was blocked into him. Let's watch this. Here comes the rush. Right up the gut. He was not, and we ran into him. Mm. First down the other way. Clearly, that's a risk. Took a gamble. I could get to the ball. Didn't get it. Runs into the kicker. You like the effort, but not the result. <laughs> he gets, he gets <laughs> up. No, no, no. Are you going to believe me or your lying eyes, Ruff? <laughs> Clearly a sign of guilt. Stowe was actually a, a great special teams player for the Pittsburgh Steelers and considered an awfully nice pickup by Bugle. Not because of plays like that. Gerald Riggs in the backfield for Washington. Riggs the ball carrier. Riggs for the first down. And Randy, how do you size up this schedule for the Skins upcoming? Well, next up to see if this is a legitimate Super Bowl team as a member of the AFC, a team that will do a lot of no huddle, and that's Cincinnati Bengals. They've got a tough schedule coming up. Cleveland, that might be two buys for the Redskins, the way they're playing right now. <laughs> but uh, Joe Gibbs and company have got things on a roll. The key for them the rest of this year is going to be number 11. If Mark Rippon can play it safe and play it sharp and play it smart, this is a legitimate Super Bowl contender. Rippon's got a nice one under his belt today. Riggs. And Riggs hops into a wall. Rod Sadler. Mm -hmm. Is that the Indians and the Reds? No, it's the Browns <laughs> and the Bengals. Could be a baseball score. I think I'll quit predicting anything today at ah, that rate. 11 hey. to 3. Woof. You've done pretty well by and large. And speaking of large. Ricky Irvins entry place Gerald Riggs. From the 36. This is Irvins. And Irvins makes even a four or five yard run exciting stop by Garth Jacks. There's not many running backs in the league right now unlike or except for Barry Sanders that can run sideways right and left and straight ahead at the same time. That's got to make a defensive back nervous because you see this thing coming at you. You don't know which way it's going to go. This is the guy as a matter of fact Gibbs says he would like to have take a load off of Ernest Biner. I think uh, I think he's done for the day huh. Yep Ernest Biner was 109 yards. Tell you what he needs to take those big offensive linemen out for a stake. They have earned their due. Off the carpet, incomplete. Intended receiver Ricky Sanders will Washington rushing today, 163 yards. Cardinal total is 160 yards. Jeff Bostic, look at that. You got a little ding knee. They're starting to pull everybody out now. Mm -hmm. Now it's that point. If you've got any little owie on your body, it's coach. Co that's how bad it's getting. The punter doesn't want to kick anymore. He wants a little ice on his leg. Of You're course, I like seeing the kickers get hit every once in a while. That's good. But he had to get a little dirty. It makes him feel like he's been in a game. Low Miller with a 48-yard attempt. And this one, he nails. So Chip Low Miller adding insult to injury, 34 zip. Working to be the best they can be. Teammates sponsored by the U.S. Army. The Cowboys' return as contenders is built with developing stars. Troy Aikman arrived in 89 and in two seasons has become the best young quarterback in the game. In 1990, Aikman was joined by Emmett Smith, who made the Pro Bowl in his first professional season. 
As individuals, Smith and Aikman are key elements in the Dallas resurgence. Together as teammates, they make the Cowboys the best they can be. This neighborhood produces most of our Olympic team stars. It's where you'll find the Emerson Flag Company. They send thousands of flags to the Olympic Games. And for rush orders, they use express mail from the Postal Service. It offers convenient pickup service, guaranteed overnight delivery, plus great low prices, which could help a small company like this have a banner year. We deliver for you. Coming up tonight on CBS, CBS premiere Sunday begins with the season premiere of 60 Minutes. Next, Jessica Fletcher is commuting to New York and ducking bullets in the season premiere of Murder, She Wrote. Then Connie Selica and Greg Evigan have a choice, pretend to be married and live in Palm Springs or be killed by the mob. The world one, two, premiere of P.S. I Love You. It's a night of premieres tonight on CBS. Low Miller, my goodness, is his leg warmed up out of the end zone. Five of seven kickoffs this afternoon by Low Miller resulted in touchbacks. Chicago's coming back on the Giants. Look at that, 639. We've got Cup coming into the game. I guess Bugles decided enough is enough for the pounding that Tom Cooper's had to take so far. Well, painting a face on Cup, we talked about him being called Mr. Nice Guy. Hopefully he's got a little bass in his voice. He said his pitch is awfully high. Awfully high. We'll also find out how resilient he is because he's going to get smacked. Cup back to pass on first down. And it's complete to Jordan. And Jordan gets within a half a yard of the first down marker. And before they run the second play, let's check in with Greg Gumbel. Well, JB, in Chicago, the Bears have come back to grab the lead. Neil Anderson, 42 yards around the left side. Watch that final yard, that five-yard dive for the touchdown. All the scores and highlights coming up on the postgame show. It's 20 to 17 Bears, James. All right, Greg. And as he mentioned, he will be bringing you up to date on everything that's taking place around the league with the NFL Today postgame show. Meanwhile, Cup trying to run for the first down, and he has it. But Craig Cup, the young man out of Pacific Lutheran, trying to show a little something here in his first start, or first action, shall we say. And Tom Tupa resting on the sidelines. Now, if the punter needed one ice bag on his left knee, good burn, you could put him in a bodysuit of ice right now. He's got to be hurting everywhere. Maybe his heart might be hurting more than anything else. With the three interceptions, he's got to be down. He's awful excited about coming into this game today. Tough kid, though. I like him a lot. I think he's going to be all right. First and ten. Five minutes left in the contest. And Marcus Cook put the heat on Cup as he throws incomplete to Ricky Pro. And it was Marcus Cook and Fred Stokes who said, hey, let's meet at the quarterback. And meet at the quarterback they did. What was that, Animal House? That movie where all of a sudden everybody yelled, dog pile? Here's a dog pile. And unfortunately, Craig Cup's in the bottom of the dog pile. Mm, Tim Johnson in on the action as well. That's a lot of beef. Second and ten. And Cup throws it complete for the first down to Randall Hill. So we take a look at the Cardinals' upcoming schedule. No rest for the Cardinals because they're going to go against the Dallas team that's stung by that, the way they're getting beat up right now by the Philadelphia Eagles. They've got a rough road to hoe right now in this NFC East. Joe Bugle does that. Don't look for them to be too down, get too depressed. They just don't have the opportunity or the time to do it. Randall Hill, Cardinal staff, and Joe Bugle specifically say he's got all the tools to be a great one. 
First and ten for the Cardinals from the 45. Cup complete to Thompson. And Thompson, a pickup of only two, make it three. Stopped by Wilbur Marshall. Craig Cup actually, according to Bugle and staff, has the best arm of all three quarterbacks, Rosenbaugh, Tupa, and himself. He well, has the best. If you're just judging arms, and that's when you get back in the pocket, he's got to throw it from point A to point B, get it there the prettiest, get it there the fastest, get it there the best. This is your quarterback. But a guy that's got no experience, as we've seen with Tom Tupa, he's not used to reading the complicated zones, and it bit him today. Cup is nowhere near ready to play against a good defense. Second and seven. Flag on a play. Incomplete. And Charles Mann looked to be continuing unabated toward the quarterback. Offsides, number 71 defense, five yards, still second down. And that is Charles Mann. And here's Charles Mann working right up here against Tootie Robbins, the right tackle for the Phoenix Cardinals. He leaves a little early. <laughs> a little early, huh? Just taste. <laughs> second and two from the 47. 358 left in the game. Cup. In trouble, sacked by Charles Mann, who forces the fumble. And, it, and in fact, it's the Skins' ball. Excellent play by Charles Mann. The sack and the forced fumble. Third sack of the year for Charles Mann. When Craig Cup was at Pacific Lutheran, they didn't play against the Washington Redskins. I don't think I have to check their schedule, but they didn't play him too often. He's not used to getting hit too often but like this. Watch this. Man gets away. He ducks his head, and that ball squirts right out from underneath. Cup doesn't even go for the ball. He's too busy worrying about if his head's still connected to his neck. And the play is being reviewed upstairs. And Charles Mann, obvious indication of how he feels one more time let's see when this ball gets out little pump here comes Charles Mann ah. well the only reason that Cup's whole body wasn't on the ground is because Charles Mann was bending him in half and there's the big guy had, has had a heck of a game today you know a lot of doubt about Mann in that right leg and maybe he's beat up let's look at it from the end zone We'll see it see, oh, yeah. clearly that oh, ball yeah. came out. Absolutely. So Charles Mann played with a lot of pain last year. As I mentioned before, underwent surgery on that knee of his again for the fifth time. But you never knew about it until the surgery. And the play stands. Jeff Rutledge in a quarterback for the Skins. Gerald Riggs, the ball carrier. And Riggs ahead for about two and a half. We'll call it three. And the clock continues to wind down. 3.37 left in the game. Coming up next here on CBS Sports, the NFL Today post-game show. Greg and Terry will bring you up today from action around the league. And it looks like we've got some good action taking place indeed. And right here, we've got the closest thing you're ever going to see to a wishbone team going on in the NFL. They're just going to run this ball straight ahead and off. Second and seven. This is Riggs. And Riggs, gang tackle, led by Steve Heisch. Second year player out of Livingston College. They talk about this game in the context of a college game. If this is the college game, all the guys that are in now are the guys that are trying to get their letter. You got to have X number of plays to get your letter for the year in that sport. Well, everybody getting their letter out there is right there. Now. It's out there right now. <laughs> well, the only letter that's going to be put on the Phoenix Cardinals after this one is the Big L, the first loss of the season. 
Take a look at Tootie Robbins and Vernice Smith. Third and five from the 38. 223 left in the game. Irving. And Mr. Shake and Bake jiggling his way up for three. He's an exciting back that will have plenty of time and opportunity to mature. Because with guys like Biner and Riggs in front of him, and not only that, they've only got, oh, even got Mitchell in front of him. It's going to take this guy a while to bust through. Two-minute warning. Bugle down by 34. They've come for you. It's your bed. You're sort of perfect sleeper. But it's the most comfortable spot in the house. The Serta surface and support only Serta builds in makes it that way. The way it should be. It's why people are saying, I want my Serta. Now's your chance to save big on the best. During the biggest and best Serta sale at participating retailers. It's the biggest sale of the year, so save today. Because if you don't watch your figure, who will? It's the right beat. Because when it comes to water, the only place to start is at the top. It's the right beer now. Because when the party's going full steam, you don't want to fill up. So reach for the beer that won't slow you down. The Silver Bullet. It's the, right beer now. the Allstate agent who helps insure your home can give you a hand with a plan for life insurance. Life insurance. Your Allstate agent wants to be your agent for life. You're in good hands with Allstate. It lives in your attic. It steals from you. It's... The space without enough insulation. The Department of Energy recommends R38 or one foot of pink insulation. Owens Corning recommends you call. Those smiling faces on the Washington Redskins sideline tells a lot about that story. I think the score tells a lot more about that story at 34 nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, it's fourth and two. And, and the Redskins what? are up 34 nothing, and the Redskins are going for it. Mm -hmm. That actually could be viewed as being benevolent. Well, as it, opposed to going for the field goal. It's within within the range of Low Miller, mm -hmm. but uh, it could also be viewed as rubbing it in. Well, Irvin's is close. We'll see where they mark it. And it's Phoenix ball. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League. And the CBS telecast is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of CBS and the National Football League is prohibited. Today's game was produced by Bob Monsbach and directed by Kathy Barreto. The NFL Today was produced by Eric Mann and directed by Duke Struck. Senior producer of the NFL on CBS is Ed Gorin, and the executive producer is Ted Shaker. And special thanks to Gary Lynn and Steve Kleinfeld. <laughs> Cup throws it incomplete. Intended receiver was a mod field. Boy. Jumpy Gathers just lit Cup up, put his helmet right under his chin just before he let go of that ball. He hasn't been in here very long, but he too might need an ice body suit by the time they get on that plane back to Phoenix. Watch Gathers, Gathers right here. Gathers. Oof. Oof. Ow. <laughs> and Jumpy Gathers is 6'7". They've got him listed at 290. I think he's closer to 295. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you say, mm-hmm. <laughs> Second and ten. Incomplete. Ball thrown around the kneecaps of Tim Jordan. Can't do anything with it there. And the Skins haven't pitched two shutouts since 1977. And of course, the top of the season this year, a 45-zip spanking of the Detroit Lions. 
with 145 remaining as you take a look at Richie Pettibone. Defense certainly has done the job today. Incomplete and should have been caught, and it is, as a fact, an interception. Danny Copeland. The fifth turnover for the Cardinals. Well, Tom Tupa's not the only guy that can throw the ball into funny spaces. Wide open. Ernie Jones starts running. That was a nice throw by Cup. Look at Copeland. That's a gift right there. Skins might want to hurry Let's up and see get out here. hit the ground. I think they want to run a play quickly if they get a chance. Ooh. That might have been a trap. We'll see if Al Sabato stops the action on the field to review it. And in fact, it's being reviewed right now. Yeah, that's a trap. Clearly, that hits the ground first. Looks like a little communication is taking place right now. Well, that pass was thrown just behind Jones right there. He had to sort of reach back for it. If Cup would have let him, it would have been a, about another 15-yard run after he would have caught it. Mm -hmm. But all he could do was get that one arm down, one arm back, and it seems every time a ball is tipped, whether it's intentionally or unintentionally, nothing good ever happens. I mean, passes, a lot of coaches think passes are dangerous enough, but when you start tipping around, mostly it goes bad. It'll be fourth down and 10 on the 35. Uh huh. So now it goes in the record book. And the stat sheet is an incomplete a pass. One more time. Here's what they ruled on. You can clearly see there in the shadow of Copeland's body that ball bounced first before it came up into his stomach. Is, is he celebrating? I was about to say he doesn't look happy, but believe me, he is. <laughs> you mean inside he's jumping there's a guy jumping up and down but outside he's just very calm and cool that's about it now there's a man that's a little bit easier to read yeah we know how he feels the whole first class section of that plane back to phoenix might be empty everybody else is going to get as far into the back of the plane as they can get on fourth and ten 135 left Cup chased by Stokes and he's sacked by Fred Stokes. Fred Stokes, bad shoulder and all. Fourth sack of the afternoon for the Skins. And don't forget, coming up after this one, the NFL Today postgame show. Greg Gumbel and Terry Bradshaw. We'll take you around the league and update you on all the scores and highlights and any relevant information. As Kenny Stabler used to call it, the win the game move by Jeff Rutledge. Tight one in Chicago, not a close one between Philadelphia and Dallas. Close one, Minnesota and San Francisco. Minnesota, of course, taking it. Tampa six to five over Green Bay so far. That's an unbelievable score. Look at this, 11 to 10. Pittsburgh recovering from that thrashing Buffalo gave them last week. Jim Kelly just had a field day. The second lot football. Oh, huh? the, the second 500 yard. In a row, they were talking about this morning mm -hmm. on the NFL today. Oof. Well, Washington has not been a friendly place today for Tom Tupa. And historically, as I mentioned at the top of the show, for the Cardinals organization. 13 unsuccessful trips here to RFK. In three games against the Cardinals, Joe Gibbs' team has scored 103 points against Phoenix. As Joe Bugle goes to speak to some of his ex-Hogs.
Let's check in now with Pat Summerall. False start. False start. Offense prior to the snap. Number 76. Five yard penalty. Right there, that's Third John down. Elliott. Again, these guys have been playing their guts out all day, these linemen, and it's tough. They know they have to pass protect. They don't want to get the guy. He didn't move, he didn't run, he just picked up his hand. He had his left hand down, and he just picked up his left hand before the ball was Once you put it down, you can't pick it up. It has to stay there. Third and goal from the 18 now with 19 seconds to go. The Bears leading 20 to 17. And now I think the Giants have to throw the ball and have to throw it into the end zone. If they have to kick and have time, it would be from 35 yards out against the wind. Here's Hostetler to the end zone, incomplete. Fourth down, so they'll have to do it. This is the same place, the same, the same hash mark that Butler had to kick earlier. Remember how much the wind brought it from right to left. And those flags up on the top of the stadium are still going right to left. He'll have to kick it toward the his right upright, your left. Partially blocked and no good. about bringing an empty bucket and laying it all out let everything out of your bucket the buckets were empty today here's the play that kept this game out overtime you get Mangum coming from the outside the push in the middle and it was the fridge you see his arm up there his right arm was a ball that blocked that kick. There is one happy coach and a happy player and a tired player. Some more tired players. I'll tell you, I still think that that offensive line of the Giants didn't win this game, but they still dominated it. Once again. Once again, the final score in Chicago. The Bears 20, the Giants 17. Stay tuned for the NFL Today postgame show. Greg and Terry will have all the scores, highlights, and latest information from around the league. We're watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. in this game alone. So still coming up, the NFL Today, the postgame show. All the scores and highlights, and this has got to be one of the feature attractions of the NFL Today.